We talked a lot about ionic bonds. An ionic bond, remember, is when a metal gives up an electron and gives it to a non-metal over here. Puts a charge on the atom, they're attracted, and they make compounds. <clears throat> well, today we're going to talk about another kind of chemical bonding called covalent bonds. And that's when these non-metals over here actually join together. And hydrogen's also considered a non-metal as well. So if, for example, I take hydrogen and join it with oxygen, that would be what's called a covalent bond. Or if I take carbon and I join it with hydrogen, it would be a covalent bond. We call the things that these atoms make when they come together, we call them molecules as opposed to compounds. But uh, the properties of molecules is different than the original atoms that make them. Okay, so let's start with, uh, how about chlorine? Let's take a chlorine atom, and chlorine, if we draw it, would look something like this. And valence electrons, it's in group 17, so you know that it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to add the single electron on this side. I normally have taught you to draw it a little differently, but I'm going to do it on that side to sh show something. And you'll see it's unstable. So we see right away chlorine's unstable. Well, it turns out chlorine can actually bond to itself to make itself stable. So the first drawing, I'm going to draw chlorine way over here again. And I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to add the seventh one on this side this time to help illustrate something. And in fact, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to even black those in. Now, what if we took and they tried to share electrons, or not share, if they tried to give an electron away, in other words, if this one tried to give an electron over here so that this atom had a full outer shell or an octet, this one would be happy, but this one would actually only have six outer electrons, so that's not going to work. And if we do the same over here and try to give this one over here, this one would be happy, but this one wouldn't. So, this is why nonmetals don't actually form ionic bonds. What they do instead is that these two are going to move towards each other, and they're going to end up sharing these two electrons right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this. Marissa Jensen. I'm going to redraw this now and bring them next to each other. So I'm going to have my chlorine atom. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there's the seventh one. And then this other chlorine is going to come in right next to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and its seventh one is now right here. And I'll highlight those black so you can see where they were. So here was this one that was right here, and the one that's here is right there. Now they're actually sharing these two electrons. So watch what I do with the arrow. If I go around the chlorine and I count the electrons, including the shared ones, I have a full outer shell, or octet. If I do the same on this one, and I can count these two shared ones, I have a full outer shell, or octet. Okay, so these two right here are being shared. Now I'm going to draw around it so you can see that they're being shared with a blue line, kind of a dotted line try to draw it dotted. So if I go around the chlorine and the two shared, you'll count up all those electrons and you'll see it has eight. I could do the same for the other chlorine. And if you count all those electrons, you'll see they're eight. So they now basically have what we would call octets or full outer shells. Well, that's a lot of drawing to do for a chemical bond. So we do see that chlorine will join to itself and make what we'd call Cl2. And the way we would draw this is we can take this shared, this shared electron right here, these shared two electrons, and we can draw that with a line instead. So I'm going to redraw this, the simpler way of showing it. And it would basically be Cl. And those two electrons in black, we could represent with just a line and another Cl. So we don't normally put black dots on the line, but just to show you what I'm talking about, there would be an electron here and an electron there. So every line equals two electrons, 
and we would call this a single bond. We could, just to clarify, this would be good enough to show, but if you're trying to see things still, you could add those electrons that weren't involved in the bond around your chlorine as well, and you'll be able to count up that they each have eight. So chemically, we would name this Cl subscript 2. It means there are two chlorine atoms joined together. All right, let's try this with oxygen. Um, turns out oxygen by itself is also not very stable. It's a non-metal, so it's going to form an ionic bond. Turns out it can form an ionic bond, actually, with itself, and I'll show you that in a minute. But first of all, oxygen over here, it is um, in group 16, and so you can see it's got two paired and uh, these two that are unpaired. So it needs to make an ionic bond with this electron and this electron to be stable. It needs to share electrons here and over here to be stable. By the way, there's a quick way to figure that out. If you're at the Noble... Tyson Coker. If you are at the Noble gases, they're stable. Turns out that all of these in this group right here need to have one covalent bond to be stable because they're missing one electron. All of these need two covalent bonds to be stable. You'll see the oxygen here. It needs two bonds to be stable. These need three bonds to be stable. One, two, three. This needs four bonds to be stable. So if you count over from the noble gases, you'll figure out how many bonds it needs to be stable. Hydrogen, if you just count over here, hydrogen's weird. It has one valence electron. It only needs, remember, one more to be stable. So if I just skip all the way over here, that's one. The hydrogen only needs one bond to be stable. Okay, back to oxygen. Turns out oxygen can actually bond to itself. And I'm actually going to redraw my oxygen because I'm instead of putting this electron right here, I'm going to move it um, so it's easier to see what's happening. So I'm going to redraw oxygen with one, two, th three, four, five, six. I'm just moving where this one was, moving it down. It turns out it can join with itself, and I'll show you how. One, two, three, four, and then this one and this one like that. So what can happen with oxygen is these two could be shared and those two could be shared. See that? And so if I redraw this, it would look something like this. Oxygen with two lines, it's called a double bond. Now remember in that double bond, technically there are one, two in each of those. There's a total of four electrons being shared there. And then I'm gonna redraw these and these, and I'm just gonna put them on the top and on the bottom for the sake of simplicity. And I'm gonna redraw those and those here and here. Now let's count up the electrons. Let me switch colors here. I'll do a light gray. If I count these, there's right here, those are two electrons, and I'm gonna keep going around my oxygen, two electrons, and right there is four more, so it has eight. Notice oxygen, remember I told you a minute ago, it's gonna form two bonds, because it's one, two away. Notice it formed two bonds, okay? And then the same thing with the other oxygen, if I draw my circle this way, You'll see I have eight electrons for both oxygens. This is called a double bond. Okay? And so um, molecules can pair up that way. Let's see if I can give you a few more examples. I took this from one of the handouts I often give in class. So um, here I'm asking to make a water molecule. So water is normally H2O. That means it has two hydrogens and only one oxygen. So what I'm trying to get students to do here is uh, turn this into an ionic, I'm sorry, into a um, covalent bond or show how it's, the molecule looks, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is say how many of each atom we have. We have a hydrogen atom and we have an oxygen atom. And if you look, you'll see there are two hydrogen atoms. So I'm gonna put a two up there where it says number of atoms and there's just one oxygen. So now you got to tell me how many bonds it's going to make. And it's going to make, hydrogen has one valence electron, so it wants to make one bond to be stable. 
Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. And this one could make a bond to be stable, and so could that one. So it wants to make two bonds to be stable. And again, if you look at the periodic chart, you'll notice that oxygen is one, two over from the noble gases, and so that's another way to know it will make two bonds. Okay. So now, how is this going to work? I'm going to color this one black, because what can happen is this black one can be shared with this oxygen one over here, and since I have two hydrogens, a hydrogen could also come in on this side to share an electron. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So if I sketch this out, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have oxygen in the middle, and I highly recommend for now just drawing the ones that didn't pair up. And this electron and this electron can be shared. So what will happen is we can share a bonded pair with a line now and an H here. Now remember, in that bonded line is actually two electrons. You don't have to draw them there, but there's actually two. And then since we have two hydrogen atoms, we're going to have the same thing happen on the other side. And again, there are two electrons in there. So now if we try to look at kind of what we have here, if we look at just the oxygen, did oxygen make two bonds? And the answer is yes, we have one bond right here and another bond right there. So oxygen made two bonds, and if I count the electrons, you'll see that it has eight electrons that it's using with um, them being shared on the two sides. And then hydrogen, hydrogen made this hydrogen over here made one bond, which is what we wanted it to do, and it has a full outer shell. And then since I had two hydrogen atoms, the other one's over here, that's full as well. Okay. So let's try one more here. Okay. So let's do a natural gas, which is a methane. So let's see if I can figure out how to erase this part here. It's going to erase more than I wanted to, but that's okay. So um, let's work on natural gas. So CH4. All right, so I have a carbon atom. I have a hydrogen atom. Carbon has one, two, three, four valence electrons. Hydrogen has one. How many bonds will carbon make? Well, you could count over from the periodic table. It's four away from the noble gases, or you could just see that I have four electrons that need pairs, so it needs to make four bonds. Hydrogen needs to make one. How many atoms of each? Well, carbon, I have one atom of carbon, and I have four atoms of hydrogen. So what we're going to do is we're going to put carbon in the middle, and this hydrogen can move its electron over here and share these two. Okay, so I'm going to draw that line like this. Okay, that's one bond for carbon. Here's another bond for carbon. Here's another bond for carbon. Here's another bond for carbon. Now, hydrogen has made its one bond it needs to make. Carbon has made its four bonds it needs to make. I've used four hydrogen atoms. That's CH4. I think I'm going to call it good for the tutorial, um, and if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Eh, I lied. Let's do one more together. Uh, how about carbon dioxide? Okay, I'm going to take the template away and just solve the problem. So carbon, if you look at the periodic table, I know carbon is going to need to make four bonds. And oxygen, if you look at the periodic table, each oxygen is going to need to make two bonds. So I'm going to start out by just putting carbon in the center. I'm going to leave my electron dots off now and just work on the number of bonds. Carbon needs to make four bonds. Well, the thing is, I only have two oxygens to work with here. So I'm just going to sketch out two oxygens here and know that each one needs to make two bonds. And this is where the double bond is going to come in handy. Because oxygen needs to make two bonds and carbon needs to make four, if I do that, I will end up having all of 
the electron requirements fulfilled. Okay? So carbon has now made eight, uh, four bonds, each oxygen's made two bonds, and that's what a carbon dioxide or CO2 molecule would look like. E -e -e. Now I'm done. <laughs>